we have an instrument here that is quite old, but it demonstrates various locations around the planet. We call it a solar scope because it allows us to simulate situations. At the moment, this machine is dialed up to simulate Sydney, 34 degrees south. At the moment, we're using this light source reflected off this mirror here to simulate the height the sun would be at. It's the middle of winter. It's the shortest day of the year and we're looking at midday. And so we have a situation where the sun is reflecting straight in to our artificial house. That's acceptable. We want as much light to come in to a house in the middle of winter. It warms us. We don't want too much light coming into the house in the summer period. So we're going to be looking at a number of different options. This is Sydney. In a few minutes, we're going to dial up another location called Invercargill, which is the bottom most part of New Zealand. We'll observe how the sun's position will change because we'll be at a different latitude. In passive solar design, we deliberately put the eaves in such a position so that in the middle of winter, we still let sunlight in. It's okay for the sunlight to come in in the middle of winter. So we're going to make a note here of the extent of the eaves on our artificial house so that in winter, we let the light in, but then in a few minutes we're going to dial up summer. And of course, we don't want the summer sun to come into our house. So we've made a note here of the position of our eaves so that we can then compare and contrast that with the summer conditions in Sydney. The other thing that we can introduce is what we call a light shelf. It's a way of reflecting light into the room so that what we see inside the room is diffused light, not harsh light. And so the light shelf can be introduced. We've still got the eaves working quite happily here, and we might just introduce the light shelf. Now, the idea is that the light shelf can be positioned wherever we want it to be. But we can see now that the light is hitting the shelf, bouncing into the house, giving diffused light internally. This is quite acceptable because diffused light is a softer light. Without this light shelf, it would be direct sunlight coming straight in. The idea of the light shelf is that we can still look out, look at the view, look at the vista, but the light itself is diffused in nature. So we're now going to go from the shortest day of the year to the longest day of the year, the 21st of December. So we're going to move, so to speak, the sun up because we know that in summertime, the sun is far higher than in winter. And so we're dialing up now the 21st of December. We've now dialed up the 21st of December, longest day of the year. We've got the eaves at the same location as we had for winter, the shortest day of the year. And as we can see, the shadow line is now well below the window sill. This is exactly what we want to see happen in summer. We're quite happy for the winter sun to come in, but now with the summer sun, we want to keep it out of our house. We want to keep it below the window sill. This is exactly what passive solar design is all about. Having the length of the eaves sufficient to keep the summer sun out, but to let the winter sun in. Right now, we're in the middle of winter in Sydney. We're going to now move to Invercargill. Sydney is at 34 degrees south. Invercargill is at 47 degrees south. So we're moving now to Invercargill 
And as you can see, the angle is moving down further. So to speak, the Earth is moving. No, it's not. We're moved now to 47 degrees south. It's lower on the globe. Sydney is higher on the globe. It's logical. This machine is mechanically operated and so it's simulating now exactly where the sun would be at Invercargill in the middle of winter as compared to Sydney which we were at seconds ago. We've now moved to Invercargill, southern tip of New Zealand, 47 degrees south. As we've seen, so to speak, the platform has moved. It hasn't moved. The reality is we've moved further south. And so therefore the angle of the sun now is lower in the horizon. We're in the middle of winter. It's midday. And as we can see, the sun is hardly above the horizon. The sun is coming directly into our artificial house. It's quite acceptable. Invercargill is quite cold. In the middle of winter, it must be freezing down there. But the reality is we're simulating the condition. The sun is shining into the house. That's quite acceptable in the middle of winter. We're going to introduce the eaves, but in this particular case in Invercargill, in order to have eaves, we would have to extend the eaves considerably. By introducing the eaves, this is the position the eaves was in for Sydney in the middle of winter. There's hardly any shadow. If we try to eliminate the sun, we would have to move the eaves considerably out. Highly impractical. Why do we want to do this? We don't. And so in Invercargill, we're quite happy just to have limited eaves so that at least we've got some shading. At the moment, we're in midday, 12 o'clock. We're going to swing now to 9 o'clock in the morning. 9 o'clock in the morning, the sun rises in the east. And so this is the mechanical way of showing this. Let's remind ourselves that this machine was developed prior to computerization. This was a way of mechanically showing the position of the sun at 9 o'clock. And let's swing it through to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Nowadays, we can do this on computers. We can show the position of the sun. We can show the shadow lines of buildings at 9 o'clock, at 12 o'clock, and at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So now we have the sun at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The sun has set. Obviously, this is the horizon here, and so therefore the sun is virtually right on the horizon. We've now dialed up 21st of December at Invercargill. We have a situation now where obviously the sun is a lot higher. If we put our eaves where they were in Sydney, it's here. As you can see, not all the eaves is keeping the sun out in the middle of summer in Invercargill. That's acceptable because we don't mind some heat load coming into our house in the middle of summer in Invercargill. The heat load of the sun in Invercargill is nowhere near as great as what it is in Sydney in the middle of summer. The intensity of the light is spread over a greater surface area and so therefore the intensity is nowhere near as great. This is acceptable. These eaves are sufficient to keep most of the summer sun out. Here we have the sum, summer sun in the middle of the day, 12 o'clock noon. We're now going to dial up 9 o'clock in the morning and we're going to observe where the sun is at 9 o'clock in comparison to 9 o'clock in the middle of winter. 
So now we have the sun at 9 o'clock in the morning in Invercargill in the middle of summer. We can see how much higher in the horizon the sun is compared to when it was in the middle of winter. If you recall, in the middle of winter, it was right down on the horizon itself. Let's go across now to 3 o'clock in the afternoon and we'll see where the sun is at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And there we have it. So again, the sun is in the same position as it was across here, but this is 3 o'clock in the afternoon. As I said before, we now can simulate this on computers. We can easily do this creating shadow lines for 3 o'clock in the afternoon and 9 o'clock in the morning. Most councils now want you to demonstrate what are the shadow lines of buildings both in summer and winter, 9 o'clock in the morning, midday and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. This is a requirement for most DAs to most councils